So let's assume that I have, let's say, a synthetic foam or a lattice structure of this configuration. One of the essential properties that you need to determine from your numerical analysis is the bulk modulus because this helps you understand the ability of this material to absorb compressive loading when in use. And so to design the right kind of experiment to explore this is not something that a lot of times people are very used to. So that's what I want to show in this video, how you can set up a model to explore the bulk modulus for this kind of materials. So if you're interested in this, then sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So welcome to this channel. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. I'm a university lecturer and associate professor within a UK university and I'm the host of this CM videos channel where we try to explore everything con con relating to computational modeling and most of the time I work with Abacus and the purpose of this video was really motivated by this question by this, this YouTube subscriber of mine called Manish Singh and he left this message saying great video thanks can you make a video on calculating the bulk modulus of a lattice structure so clearly the interest of Manish in this video is on lattice structure and so when I got this message on this video I, I began to think about it and I was like wondering how do I go about demonstrating to Manish how you can do this clearly what Manish is exploring here is the lattice structure so this is a typical example of a lattice structure it's a simple cubic BCC lattice structure the idea is that when if you can set it up numerically then you can extract the bulk modulus but there's a problem here because how do you know that what you're going to get numerically would be correct because you then have to run some kind of verification study first and foremost to make sure you understand what you're trying to do before you can actually go trying to determine these properties and so i decided to change the problem a bit by saying okay let's investigate a homogeneous structure which doesn't have you know the complexities of a lattice structure like this and um, because with a homogeneous structure we can easily calculate you now analytically its bulk modulus and then We'll see whether that bulk modulus matches up also with this numerically determined bulk modulus. So in the end, we want to find out the K homogeneous, which is numerical, and want to see if that matches up with analytical formulation. If you're interested in this kind of comparison within the two, watch to the end of the video where I explain this in more detail. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to look at a material that is homogeneous, extract its bulk modulus and compare that with an analytically determined bulk modulus for this sort of materials. So let's look at what definition of a bulk modulus is. It's essentially an elastic property of a material that measures the resistance of that material to compressive loading. It could also be for tensile loading, but most of the time it's really compressive loading, where every surface of that structure is constrained under pressure. So basically, when you think of a hydrostatically constrained model, how is that system going to respond under the effect of the pressure that is upon it? And so the material property that characterizes this kind of response is called the bulk modulus. Let's think of how you need to design the experiment. So let's say we're looking at a, you know, a cubic block, in this case in 2D. So I'm going to treat it as a polypropylene block. It could be for any other kind of material. These are the dimensions of the material. So it's got a certain length and a certain height in this face. There will also be a depth to it, which is a width, but I'm not showing it in this instance, in this illustration. So one of the things I want to do is I want to constrain the base completely so that the system is not able to expand in that base direction. We also want to constrain the left-hand side and constrain the right-hand side. So this is this idea that there is a pressure load on every surface on the structure. And of course, clearly the top surface, which is free, we're going to apply a pressure load right at the top of the system. The idea is that this system will then be constrained in every three possible direction, every possible direction. And that also will apply even for the Z axis, which is the axis that we can, you know, we can the depth of this material. So what we then want to see is how will this device, this block behave under this? What kind of response do we extract? And with that response, we are then able to determine the bulk modulus. So some of the things we need to note is that the left edge here, I'm going to call it the X front set roller. So that's the boundary condition we're going to apply here, where this is the X front surface in this instance. This will be the X back surface. And I'm using front and back based on the X axis. And the Y axis, so we've got Y base, which is the base of this end. So there's a roller supported that system. And the Y top will also be identified with a pressure load right on it. 
And so this is sort of how the model has to be set up. So clearly this is in 2D. They will try and show this even in three dimension. With this, once we run the simulation, we're going to extract certain properties that will help us with this study. So just to put a bit of numbers to what we're trying to do. So the length, height and width of the material we're going to study, in this case the polypropylene block will be 15 millimeters. The pressure load I'm going to apply it is a 300 kilopascal pressure load. We're going to run the simulation purely in the elastic regime because bulk models in its elastic response. And so we're going to do a simply elastic behavior of the system. And the material we're going to study is polypropylene with a Young's modulus of 1.308 gigapascal and a Poisson ratio of 0.4. If you're interested in this kind of thing, please do subscribe to this channel and do like the video and leave me a comment of what you think or how this bulk modulus, you know, you use it in your kind of simulation. Or you can also suggest videos like Manish has done so I can use that in trying to make videos to support you in your computational journey. So we're going to go into Abacus and I'll set it this model up and then we can go ahead and show what you need to do. So here we are in Abacus and I've already set up this model and running before and this is the result that we get. But I'm just going to start afresh to show you what we're going to do. So basically we need to click, click the create the PP block and it's going to be 3D extrusion method and it will start from 00, 0 and 15, 15 to give you the dimensions and then we'll click done. So in the depth wise direction of this system, it will be 15. So this is basically our block. So we're probably going to part section. So I can create the material that we need. So in this case, we want a PP material. So the elasticity of this material would be 1.308 e to power three in millimeters. And then Poisson ratio is 0 0.4. So we're going to forget about the plasticity because in this case, we're interested in bulk modulus and plasticity is not really a critical value. And then we can then look at the section. So PP section. So we've got a property. And then if we go back here under the part module, we can basically, you know, do a section assignment as usual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all that. I'm going to call this all. So let's basically create a set where we call it all model and we assign it to the PP section and we're going to mesh. So I'm going to accept what default it gives me and then we'll just mesh it. And this is, this is fine, no problem. So we've got everything that we need in setting up the model. So we've got section assignment. So within the assembly, obviously I need to create an instance. So the stance is fine. And then we can just do a few things of by looking at the sets. So here I'm going to call this my X front and this will be based on the front region. So we'll do the other set as well. So Y top set. And then we'll just continue to do the other one. So the Z front set will be that. So we need to identify all these sets. So if we rotate the system, we can see, okay, we can see where the back, this is the back. So again, we'll create set for those. So this will be X back set, so which will be this one. And then Y base set. So we're looking at the Y direction and we will obviously identify what's happening here. So we we'll select that. And then the last one is the Z back set. So Z back set, which should be this face. So we get it into that window and then we can look at the sets. So everything looks all fine based on what we have here. And then we can rotate it around just to make sure they are all identically identical. So if we take out the meshing, so we can see how it looks. So basically all the sets are clearly identified and we are going to then apply loading onto them. So let's apply a loading step. So that's our loading step. So we now constrain all the faces. So X front set ruler. So I'm going to use an initial boundary condition displacement and then I select the set. So basically the X front set is what we have. So we highlight that and we're going to constrain it in the one direction. So we'll do the same thing X back set so that's the x back and we constrain it also in the one direction so with the other case so we go y back or y base set as a roller so y base so again we constrain this time around in the two direction so z front set with a roller support so z front set and we're going to constrain that in the third exit and z back set with a roller so that will be in the back direction, so in the third axis. So what we've got here is that all the faces have been applied load except the top, which we know we are going to apply a pressure load onto. So we're going to create a pressure load for the top. So I'm going to call it my Y top pressure. Okay, so it will be a loading step. 
and it's a pressure load and we want to apply it on the top surface which is this so i'm going to call it y top surface so we'll create a set for that so and we want so 0.3 in terms of the unit of millimeter so pascal which is newton per millimeter squared so this is what we're going to have here so that's our pressure load and we've got everything set up the way it should be if you're interested in this kind of video please do subscribe to this channel so when contents like this are made you'll be the first to see okay so we finished the simulation and this is sort of the result that we get so i animated that you could see what is happening here so if we put them together so it gives you a sense of the before and the after image so there's a nice compressive behavior there's no movement so if we look at let's say the strain the strain also in the two direction which is the direction so again so again we have a nice setup of the model so we'll see what happens in terms of displacement so the system is moving down perfectly correctly and no problem so if you look at the two direction of loading so again you have a nice contraction from the top to the end so basically the base is zero and the top is experiencing the maximum displacement 1.606 e to the power minus 3. so we can look at the one direction so everything is all zero so basically there's no contraction in the one axis and we look at the three axis there's also no change in the dead axis so what we intended to do to have only compression in one axis which is the two axis is being fulfilled here because there's no movement in the other axis because these numbers are all zero so this is a perfect um, setup of an experiment for undertaking calculating the bulk modulus of the material so everything seems to be working out well here so let's then look at a little bit about the theory so the formula for calculating the bulk modulus is k being the bulk modulus equals the negative of v0 the p the v where v0 is the original volume from the beginning of the simulation and then tp is the change in pressure within the bulk of the material this is different from the pressure that you applied remember all the surfaces are constrained under some kind of hydrostatic pressure so there is a an, an average change of pressure maximum change of pressure within the material that's what you get here and then dv is a change in volume so if we try and evaluate that a little bit more so what you will find is that if you write the equation so dp becomes v0 minus vc so the original volume minus the compressed volume divided by the original volume is what is going to happen become the denominator so the equation finally becomes the p over the strain the volumetric strain in that axis so this is a strain in the axis of interest in this case our would be our two axis so the axis of strain in the two axis of compression so this is the formula that we're going to use in this study so the two parameters that we're going to look at for this model is the change in pressure the maximum change in pressure within the system and also the maximum strain in the direction of interest so let's go back to abacus and study this so if we come back to this model the first thing we need to do is under stress we're going to look for the pressure so the pressure variable so you can see right away the pressure on the system is 2.3 e to power minus one 2.3 e to power minus 1 so this is the total pressure that you experience within this material so in this case the homogeneous system so everything is fine no problem so we're going to have a uniform value of 2.3 the other thing we're interested in is the strain in that two axis so again we get a total strain of 1.07 times 10 to the power minus 4 so there's a total strain again what we're interested in here is the maximum strain because that's what will give you the volumetric so it's the maximum strain and the maximum average homogenized um, pressure within the system so now that we have this data so let's look at what you will get by way of analysis of this data so in the end our uh, change in pressure is 2.3 times 10 to the power minus 1 newton per meter millimeter squared the strain is 1.07 times 10 to the power minus 4 this will obtain from simulation so if you put that into the equation that we walked we will determine the 4 which is the p divided by the change in strain so what you end up is 2.18 times 10 to the power 3 newton per millimeter squared however if you convert it to newton per meter squared so it becomes multiplying this number by 10 to the power 6 so we get 2.18 gigapascal so this is the bulk modulus for this material but the question then is is this really how true how reliable are these data remember at the beginning i said that you can actually do an analytical calculation for this sort of homogeneous system to extract the bulk modulus and that's the next thing i went on to do so let's say this is the equation we're working with the equation that connects the young's modulus the Poisson ratio and the bulk modulus is basically this relationship and so we know that the e value is 1.308 and 10 to power 9 Poisson ratio is 0.4 so if you put it in together into the equation and evaluate it we get again 2.18 and 10 to power 9 pascal which is precisely the same value as we got numerically so it gives us confidence that what we have done 
in our numerical setup is actually valid and viable. And so for Manish, who is working on this, the next thing is to take the same philosophy and take a different material, which is heter heterogeneous, and then explore to see if you can extract the bulk modules for this kind of material. So if you're interested in checking out how a lattice structure is going to behave, this is a video that will tell you about how the same principle is applied to the heterogeneous system, which is basically a lattice structure. Thank you for your interest in this channel, and I'll see you in the next. Bye-bye.